Hello everybody and welcome to today's Dynamics 365 Tech Talk. Today's topic is Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations Apps, UI Performance Testing with Jamie. My name is Alejandra and I will be your moderator today. We are broadcasting this session through Microsoft Teams Town Hall. Presenting for us today from Microsoft, we have Ajay Kumar Singh, Principal R&D Solution Architect, and Edison Lai, Senior Program Manager. Ajay, over to you to get us started. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon from wherever you are joining. Uh, let's get started. So the agenda that we had today is uh, introduction of Jamie Turk. Um, and then we'll talk about a couple of demos that we're going to show. The interesting demo of using JMeter for UI performance test automation. Uh, we talk about uh, certain important uh, importance of JMeter and the things to consider. Along with that, we we have an FAQ that we have documented based on our experience. And then we will open the forum for Q&A. When it comes to introduction of JMeter, the couple of things come in our mind. What's JMeter? As we know that JMeter is an open source software from uh, Apache open source, if you have not used it in the past. And this is one of the very popular uh, tool that has been there in the market um, you know, for the performance test automation, be it a Dynamics or any other UI-based or web-based solution performance testing. The first version of JMeter was released in 1998. So you can think about that it's been uh, you know years that JMeter is there as a performance testing tool available in market for us, right? Uh, the folks who those have not used JMeter in the past, JMeter runs on all supported Java platforms. So it's a Java-based tool, right? And and probably one of the most popular that we have seen in our community since it's an open source tool. And if you guys have been uh, following a Stack Overflow and other uh, Yammer channel for JMeter, you would see uh, the kind of community support that we have for the JMeter. So why did we choose JMeter as one of the tool? Again, I mentioned earlier that it's one of the popular and very wide community for the JMeter that is there, right? That's one of the reasons for us to start uh, exploring to use JMeter as one of the performance testing tools for data certified finance and operation, be it UI or be it web service. Uh, we have done uh, a tech talk in the past, which is was using JMeter for calling web service calls to automate the UI, uh, uh, warehouse device automation. In this one, we are going to focus more on, on the UI side of automation using JMeter. What JMeter can do is that it supports wide varieties of proto protocols like HTTP, SO, uh, JDBC. So there are, there, are, there are many more that it supports, right? Uh, and so that's that's one of the reasons that we kind of started to use or evangelize JMeter as one of the tools that we can use for our, our performance testing for data 65. Again, this is nothing to limit it to JMeter. We can use, feel free to use any performance testing tool that you are comfortable with. JMeter is the one tool that we're going to talk about today. Uh, the other advantages of having JMeter is that uh, there are numerous plugins available, right, uh, for us to use uh, for the test automation. And it integrates with any CI CD platform, right? And one of the other things that I wanted to kind of call it out is, it, 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 is this is one of the best tools that we have seen that integrates very easily with Azure Load Testing Service. As a load testing service, we'll talk about that one, how to bring the test cases. But this one key point that I wanted to highlight is that if you want to go start using as a load testing services, this is the, uh, I would say is one of the best that we have seen that supported with Azure load testing service. Now, why we talk about JMeter? So if you recall and go back a couple of years back, we had a tool called, uh, you know, Performance SDK, right? That that was a kind of a, a tool that we released along with AX7, uh, and we were kind of keep supporting that. Um, but if you just look at the performance SDK, it was a tool that allowed you to uh, record scenario using the browser in FNO, right? And then you can bring back those uh, scenario or test cases recordings to Visual Studio and uh, convert into test cases, right? Now, so the part SDK, again, since that Visual Studio 2019 was the last supported version for any on-prem 
uh, you know, the testing agent. And that's where I think Visual Studio support supportability ends in uh, March 20, 20, 2024, I believe. So we are all no longer supporting Visual Studio 2019. So that's one of the reasons that we started to think about what are the different tools that we have that we can uh, start using for the performance uh, performance testing, right? So again, I won't go to the feature that we have covered in the WordPress SDK and in trust of time uh, because WordPress SDK is no longer supported, right? So what we have the capabilities in JVTR is the one that is going to be focused today. Again, it's like as like we said that it supposed it runs on the Java application. It allows you to run a test in the single user mode. It allows you to run the test in the multi user mode, right? It also allows you to, uh, you know, uh, set up your script natively within JMeter. You can execute the test cases within JMeter, or you can also bring those test cases uh, to Azure Load Testing Services and automate through that, right? Um, in Park SDK, you needed to have some sort of knowledge about the C-sharp script so that you can enhance your script that is generated by our uh, recording uh, tool that we had in uh, Visual Studio 2019. Um, and the third one that I would say that, you know, um, the test user in this, uh, for for SDK was you create a user natively. Now for for JMeter, you, you need to create that users uh, in, in AD and you need to assign the security roles. Again, that, those are the things that you need to consider when it comes to the comparison of the Parf SDK versus JMeter. Now there's no comparison at all because we are no longer supporting Parf SDK. Now, uh, going to a little bit of detail about how the JMeter looks like in terms of, you know, if, if you, the folks who those have not used in the past, and if you go and install JMeter, um, then how does it look like, right? Because you are more comfortable, more used to with the Visual Studio as a developer or administrator in Day 365. So this is a kind of on a high level visual representation of how JMeter looks like. So if you install JMeter, um, um, you know, you will see the UI where you can see this. This is the different pane and the action menu bar that you have. So you can create a test plan, and within that test plan, you just right click and add components. Components like are like your logical controllers, your uh, you know the timers, you know the samplers, like things that you want to do before and after your test cases. And so these are the things that you can organize within your test plan. And then you have here on the top is a start test. So you can uh, create your test cases, you organize with all your controls that you need to, and then you run the test, all right? Then we have a next option called start test ignores, ignoring sleep time. What does that mean? I have already start test and I have a start test with ignoring sleep time. It means is that when you do a start test and if you have added a sleep time between your two test cases, it will follow that sleep time. So example, the first test runs with 10 seconds, then you have a sleep time of two seconds, and then the next day run with 15 seconds. So it's going to run for 10, 20, and 15 plus two seconds. Uh, when we, like in the normal debugging scenario or when we are creating the test cases, we don't want to go to the sleep time. We want to ignore the sleep time. In that case, you have an option to run the test with sleep time considered, or you can run the test by ignoring the sleep time. Then you have a stop test again. Uh, then you have um, then you have an, another uh, uh, action there is called a stop test, wait for sampler to end. What it means is that what's the difference between the stop test and a stop test, wait for samples to end. The difference is that when you say stop test, it will abruptly stop the test case execution the time you click it. But when you say that stop test with wait for the sampler to end, it means that you are running a purchase requisition you created a particular question, you are doing a confirmation, right? Or you have you created a sales order, you are doing a confirmation, then you do a sales, read the sales order to warehouse. They are all the test cases that you have. Say example, you are doing a, uh, you created the test case sales order, you are running a confirmation, and at that time you click a stop test. The stop test will abruptly stop the test execution at that time. However, if you go with the stop test and wait for sampler to end, the, the process that test agent is doing, it will wait for that to finish. So example, creation is done, confirmation is going on, it will wait for the confirmation to finish and then end. You don't go for the release to warehouse, it will end at the time when it's, it's doing the con once the confirmation is done. So that's the difference between stop test and a stop test and wait for sampler to end. Then on the top, you can see here uh, the test execution time, like how long your test has been running, the number of errors that you have and warnings that will show on the top, and then you can also see the number of threads. And again, a threads are mostly the number of user simulated users that you have. So you can see 
how many terrorists that you have total and how many terrorists are running right now. Then again, it's normal health bar that you have, and then you have a function health, which is like it's mostly around you know you want to search this where you got any functions, then you can do a, a, a kind of a filtered search, and then um, search the result research, which is again nothing but just research the subject that you have and research the new stuff, right? Then you have search replace test telling. So example, you created your test plan, you added your samplers and logical controllers. You needed to change something and across the board that you wanted to do in all test cases and all controllers that you have added. You can use that search replace in the test element uh, as an, or that an option. Then you have a listener. So for when we run the test cases, we add a listener to capture the results. You can, uh, you have an option to uh, clear those listeners, right? And then uh, you can clear selected listener, you can clear everything. So example, you ran a test for purchasing uh, sales and you are in a going to run for production and then you decided okay I want to rerun the production so I will clear the listener that I or the test result that I'm going to capture for for production and I'm going to rerun so you can you have an option to either clean everything all listeners or just clean one selected listener right and then on the bottom section you see here your all your configuration elements that we have so this is like a very high level very neat and clean UI that we have in the JMeter right so and now uh, to go deeper about how to use JMeter, right? So there's like we have a test life cycle uh, in JMeter. It's not just a specific to JMeter. The test life cycle is kind of an, a valid or applicable to any testing tools, right? So the very first thing is to um, script and debug. So you need to create a single user test, right? For each scenario that you're going to test, right? Or scenario that you've identified and debug it, which means that make sure that you are able to create run it single user fashion. If you need to debug, debug it, debug it, right? Then validate the test. Is it running fine, right? Uh, and then um, execute the test. So basically, you have uh, all the test cases, 10, 15, 16, whatever that you have come up with. Uh, you validate it all running in the single user fashion. Now you'll go and run it for the multi-user, right? And run the test and then lie the result. Because testing does not mean just executing the test cases and having the result. You also need to pay attention or to spend some time on analyzing the data. Analyzing the data in the two two fashion. One is that analyze the response time that you are getting from JMeter or any testing tools, but also to look at room for optimization. Right. So you have it, uh, processes that you executed in the performance testing. You captured the data. You need to analyze. It's not just the capture number. You need to also make sure that you have enough time. You will spend some time analyzing the data and also making any uh, any adjustment that you need to do in the code configuration to make it further better, right? Now you can run the test uh, in GUI mode. As you can see here, that scripting and validating you can do it on the GUI mode, which is using um, JMeter, JMeter UI itself, the client that I was talking in the previous slide, and then you can execute that test cases either GUI or command prompt CLI mode or as a load testing. Why do I need to run the test using GUI and CLI over ALT? One is that if you have like, you know, if you're going to simulate a uh, hundred and thousands of users, right? And if you run in the GUI mode, the test, the JMeter itself will consume some resources in the CPU, network traffic from that box, your dev box to the DC65 environment that we're connecting to. So the DEX, the test controller or the dev box should not be becoming a bottleneck. The recommend is that, okay, can we do, can we run in the CLI mode? Because if you run a command, command pass in a CLI mode, execute the same test cases, it doesn't take a lot of resources on that box. And then the other option that is that you can bring those JVTOR test cases to Azure Load Testing Service, which we will be talking about. Uh, in the later part of the discussion where how to bring uh, a JMeter test case into Azure load, load testing service and you can bring it back without modifying your test cases. And then and then analyze this, you can analyze if you are running in the GUI, you, as I was talking in the previous slide, uh, there's a listener that you can look at the data of the test results. Then you can export the data into Excel. You can look at the data into Excel as well to the analysis and reporting. And when you use Azure Load Testing Services, it does have a capability to export your test results outside in Excel, or you can use um, ALT or Azure Load Testing Services itself 
to to look at all the charting, graphing of your all the response time that you have. Now, just going with the deeper about using how we can use JMeter in real world scenario, I'll hand it over to Edition, who's going to give us a, a couple of demos on how to use JMeter uh, for for test automation. Edison, over to you. Thank you, AJ, for a detailed introduction and good day, everyone. So uh, before the demonstration, uh, we need to complete some frequency and compilation in the development machine and the JMeter. But today, uh, we would like to save the time to cover a major topic in the demo. So um, I will not cover the installation and configuration in this demonstration, but you can go through my part two blog post. I have the detailed step and explanation for the frequency in the machine and also the JMeter. So um, you can check it out. But uh, let me have a um, high level overview for the uh, required step to complete uh, before you can um, kickstart the, the recording or the performance testing. Um, first of all, um, you need to install the, the Java completely in the uh, machine. Uh, but I would suggest you to take the Java 13 right now or below support version because as I uh, test and find the latest version has um, compatibility issue with the JMeter and also the co correlation plugin. And second, uh, you need to download the latest JMeter and unzip to the folder path, install the plugin, the correlation recorder, that should be the key plugin to do the UI performance testing with the uh, file license operation. And uh, of course, you need to complete the list of the correlation in the uh, JMeter test pan and correlation plugin um, setting, uh, especially my uploader um, correlation rule template and also the request filtering. Finally, you need to complete the browser or the dev machine proxy server and the JMeter certificate correctly. Otherwise, um, the step won't be record. So um, when we complete the, the frequency, then it's good to go for the um, next step. So um, let me introduce the scenario, the today um, the demonstration scenario. I, I think it, this is very common scenario in, in many customers. And also you can um, start from this scenario uh, before you, 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 you record the compass scenario from your case. Um, the background is the customer uh, would like to know what and how is the system behavior and the performance if about um, 100 purchase order required to be created by 10 uh, uh, maybe the purchase agent and submit the purchase order to the approval workflow in the peak window. Is there any performance issue due to the uh, maybe the infrastructure resources uh, uh, issue or the program issue? So the scenario, we will have the purchase agent involved in the scenario. And it's very critical. Please do not use the admin user to record the step. And the recording uh, will capture the, the purchase agent, create a PO with two lines in the demo, and then submit the PO to the approval workflow. So in the demonstration, I will show you how the recording the step in the uh, FNO for the test script and uh, validation and repay, uh, eventually conduct the multiple um, user testing. And also, and also I will show you how to conduct the performance testing in the ALT, the Azure node testing. Okay, so uh, we will start from the recording first. So uh, when we ensure the configuration complete, then you should have this test pane in the JMeter like my demo. Um, in the higher version, uh, please ensure the enable correlation latency has been selected before uh, recording is very important. Then you should um, click the start to recording and click the no in the message board to keep track the correlation rule during the recording. And then click the OK to confirm um, the uh, certificate. And then provide the transaction name. Here I will say the login should be the first step. Then open any browser, type the FNO URL, and then you will redirect to the login page, provide the user name, and password, and then click the sign in. So um, the application is complete, and then you will access to the F um, file and operation. While waiting, the system is loading, and you can extend the, um, the recording controller if the, uh, the sample has been captured. Um, it means uh, the recording is worked well. You can see the left-hand side in the JMeter. And next step is go to the PO list page, and then I will provide the transition name 
go to PO this page. And then in the application, I will go to the Pokemon and Sausage module and then click the all versus orders. When the page note, and then um, I will provide the transition name in the JMeter, um, create the PO. So um, provide the, the name, create PO. And then go back to the application and click the new button. And I will take the 1001 supply in the render account in this demonstration. Yeah, run the data from, and then I will click the OK to count to confirm to create the process order. Okay, and then I will start to input the first night first. So um, I will provide the transition name at first night detail. Okay, and then I will take first item ID is the uh, 101000, the Surface Pro 128 gigabyte. And um, provide the mandatory value in the field, in the line, um, one for the sign and 11 for the warehouse. And also I will change the quantity from one to 10. And then uh, the last amount that should be uh, with update automatically. Okay, so that should be fired in the first night. And then um, I will add the new line here. So um, I will click the new line button to add the new line. And then I will start to update up, update the second line. So I will pull out the transition at second line detail here in the upcoming step. And then, yeah. We we'll go back to the system and in the item number, I will provide um, the item is the a one the HDMI cable. And also um, the mandatory value in the field, um, one for the die and 11 for the warehouse, for example, as well. And also I will change the quantity um, from one to, to 20 in this case. And also the amount will be updated automatically as well. Okay, so all look good. And then uh, we will save the PO. So provide the transition name, save PO, and then click the save button. Okay, and next step, um, that should be submit the workflow. So I will provide the transition name, submit workflow. Then in the application, click the workflow button and click the submit button and then writing the processing operation window complete. Okay, in the comment box, I will say, uh, please approve my PO. And then click the submit button to submit the workflow. So um, you can see the status in the process order has been changed to the status in, in, uh, in review now. So the last step, uh, should be the SIO. So we provide the session name SIO and then SIO the application. Okay, when you see the uh, application SIO, and then you can stop the recording right now and then uh, ensure to click no to deny to repay the script or recordation. Okay, so then we have the end to end sample uh, recording to the PO has, has been captured for the PO creation and submission in the JMeter. And then um, you can save it and close it because uh, we, need to, we need to do the next step is the post recording step. So you can go to my uh, my blog post part two and then go to the post recording session. You can scroll down and then you can find um, there about the PowerShell. PowerShell script can be downloaded in the post recording. Okay, so when you click it, um, it will redirect you to the GitHub and you can download the PowerShell script from our GitHub, Correlation script.ps1. And in my practice, I will put this Correlation PowerShell script under the JMeter folder. So um, I will cut and paste 
the correlation script into the JMeter folder and then put it um, in the folder with my test script. Just capture the test script. And then I am opening the PowerShell with the administrator. And then um, at the correlation script dot PS1 and then SQE. And then you will find the window pop up. So um, in the first file, we need to provide the recording file, uh, which is created uh, before in the JMeter. So it should be the JMS file extension. Yeah, open it. And then um, the second file is the result file. That should be the record from the correlation plugin. You need to change the extension to the um, JTL. And then select the, um, the recording um, JTL file and then click the OK. And then the PowerShell will, according to the recording result, and call track with the script file and update the correlation value. Because this PowerShell script is help to ensure that the rest of the dynamic value can be extracted and replaced uh, with the variable. Especially JMeter did a handle like the boot ID, target ID, um, the button ID, that all is the dynamic value. So um, there will be possible change and and make correlation boot template is not target to handle the application. So um, if we confirm that no issue in the PowerShell script, and then um, open JMeter again. And then know the test script file, which just um, has been enhanced by the PowerShell script. And then you will find some of the sample um, has been enhanced by the PowerShell script, some regular expression and the variable has been added in the sampler. So um, the last step in the post recording, that should be the group by the transition. And uh, so you, you select the, the same name, of the transition name, um, like the login and the right click and select the initial parent and select the transition controller. And then provide a meaningful name in the transition controller. Uh, for example, like the access to the application, that should be the first step. And then you can repeat um, the same uh, behavior to, to, to group by the, uh, the kind of the transition um, in, the, in the transition controller. And uh, this is the practice uh, to tidy up the test plan because the original single step in the application will be involved uh, multiple transitions. So it's the practice to tidy up and make it more clear and easy to read, manage, and present in the report. And then um, I have tidied up my test plan eventually with the key arrangement of the test plan. So uh, please remember to save the test plan. When we complete the recording, then uh, it is also very important to pay back and validate the script. Yeah, so um, it's essential step um, as we need to ensure the script um, can be paid back. Otherwise, um, you need to fix it or you need to recapture the, the scenario again. So um, I have added the summary uh, report to have the, to have an overview of the summary in the test pen. Um, in the validation, we can just apply the, the single fat or small portion of the fat to confirm the script without any issue. So I leave the default value in the number of the fed and change the uh, run up from the one second to 15 seconds, but it will take the effective for the multiple user testing. And I go to the application to confirm right now, uh, we just have the five purchase order create in the system already, right? And then uh, in the JMeter, uh, go to the real research tree before uh, we click the run button. Okay, and then we can um, click the one button to execute the, the test. And then you can see the test script is executing by sequence. And uh, most of the sample in the green icon is mean um, the response code is the 200 and the result look good from the surface. And you can see the access to application is complete. Go to the PO list page already. 
and voila is creating the PO. Yeah. After create the PO is adding the first line and adding the the second line as well. And that should be yeah, just complete to save the PO. So that's next step should be submitting the um the workflow. So if we go to the application and click the refresh, you can find the new PO has been created. Uh, but it's uh, still in the draft approval status because the, sub the workflow submission is still competing, um, not yet uh, complete the submission. So uh, just wait a moment. Yeah, submitting. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah, we can see the submit workflow complete and sign up complete as well. So uh, if we refresh it right now, the new PO is changed to the in review. So, and also from the result um, in the tree, all of the sample of uh, represent green, that uh, means the respawn code should be 200. So if you get any error icon, then you need to check um, the data, what is the uh, issue in the respawn. So now we complete the single user testing. And if the, the single test is part, of course, you can move to next to the uh, multiple user testing, but I will do more uh, a small portion of the multiple fed to confirm the test no issue, like the timeout issue or session issue. So I change the number of the fed from one to 10 and kickstart the, uh, the testing button again. So you can see uh, in the summer report, the number of the sample is increasing. And um, yeah, and we can see uh, so far we don't have any error there. And also we can see the uh, the research tree, the script is executing in the research tree. We can see that some of script is executing in the in parallel. So in the application, you can see uh, we have um, yeah about 10 processor that has been created, but it's still in the draft because if we see the research tree is still um, adding the nine, adding the second nine, yeah. But we can see some of the the, the fat um complete the site out and also complete the, the workflow submission. So we can see most of the testing is completing. So it means the number of the testing should be complete or almost complete. Okay, just wait a moment. Okay, so in the in the application we can see just refresh and then uh yeah, the, the PO has been created successfully and both of them submit to the workflow. And just last PO is still in the draft because um, the, the testing is just complete. So if we refresh the, the application, okay, so last PO has been completed, uh, the workflow submission as well. So the validation complete and we have confidence to process the, um, the multiple user testing and also, you can also check my part four blog post, how to validate your test script when you computer uh, recording. Okay, so uh, when we confirm um, the script is okay, we have the script right now, and then we can conduct the multiple user testing. Our target goal in the multiple user testing is conduct the uh, performance testing with 10 users to create a 100 process order and submit to the workflow. First of all, uh, we need to create 10 AAD user in the AAD and add them in the file as an operation. So um, in the user mode, I have added the 10 testing user account in the AAD already and also in the file as an operation. So you can see we have the 10 test user and each of the user, I just assign a specific uh, security role, like the persuasion, so we can see, for example, test one, test uh, 10, I have added the uh, process agent only to those testing account. So you, you do not use the admin user for, for the performance testing. And then there are a few things we need to enhance in the test plan in the Dreameter to conduct uh, multiple user testing. The first thing uh, we need to create a CSV data set config in the Dreameter. And the CSV is stored the testing user credential. Um, they are the uh, user email and password. 
So uh, let me open the CSV. And you can see the format of the CSV file is like the email and then password with the command. Um, and then uh, I have about 10 lines. So it means the 10 testing user are randomly picked from the um, Jmeter. And then the second is <clears throat> we need to replace the credential uh, from the value to the variable um, in the Jmeter of the file test pen. So first one, that should be the get uh, credential sampler. You can see it has been replaced the um, userlam email to the uh, variable userlam user email. And other one should be the login um, sampler. You can see as well. So you can find the user email and password in this sampler. So you need to uh, we pay this we as well. So um, when you finish the credential update, and then we need to change the FAT group. The number of the FAT, I will change to uh, 100, and then uh, we should have uh, 100 purchase order create, and they are created by 10 testing user I add in the system and in the CSV file uh, randomly. Uh, because the, the best practice is we do not execute the multiple user testing performance testing in the GUI. So uh, which is uh, save and close the test pen, close the Jmeter, and open the um, CMD. And then we need to locate to the um, Jmeter folder and then find the um, Jmeter.bat, the SQ application. And then I have the command uh, uh, prepared already. And you can also copy the sample of the command from my blog post. And yeah, the command is based on the script file to execute the testing and um, store the result file in the result C3. So I, I, I paste the command in the CMD window first. Yep, so, and I will go to the application and to see um, how many purchase order in the system already, because we want to make sure from the business da data uh, perspective, we can ensure that uh, the data can be created currently. So right now we have um, 18 purchase order already in the system. So we can expect there about uh, 118 purchase order in the system when script complete. So I just kick start the performance testing. So wait a moment, and then we can see the number of the uh, purchase order uh, should be start to create. So you can see when I refresh the application, we can see uh, most of the purchase order uh, has been created and some of them in the review approval stage. And yeah, okay, the test script complete and no error fan finally and 100 fast mark uh, finish. So but you can see that uh, we can see all of the PO has has been created, and they are created by different testing account, and um, should be from the test one to test ten, and randomly to create the purchase order. So um, we can see the result file as well. So we can see all the transaction result has been stored in the result CSV. three. And next, uh, we will open the Jmeter to generate the report by the um, testing result. So um, let's open the Jmeter. To generate to generate the report, actually, you don't need to um, load the test pen. You just go to the tools and then select the um, generate HTML report. Um, for, for the first file, um, you need to select the, um, the CSV file which has been called cool from the multiple user testing. Yeah, that should be the sys file. And then the second one is the user property in the Jmeter uh, folder. So um, you can go to the bin and you can see um, the user dot property and then click the open. And the last one is the output um, directory. Um, you just uh, provide the empty folder directory and then open it. So, and click the general report and wait a moment, the, um, the Jmeter will generate the report according to the testing result. 
Okay, it's done. So the report generate, and then we can go to the report directory and open the uh, the report. And this is the HTML report, so you can open it with the browser. Okay, so um, this is the, the overview report and uh, the report with the request, um, the summary, the result. Yep, the summary result and the response time, the number of the execution. So we execute about uh, 100 pressure all the way. So you can see that the sample of the um, dot in or query PO is 100. And um, there are also uh, different kind of the chart in the report provide, um, like the, the hit per second and transition per, se per second is very useful as well. And and also the response time uh, via the request. So the re the report is very is uh, useful to present the system uh, response uh, after you 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 conduct the multiple user testing. So um, at the end you can generate the report from the JMeter. Um, no matter you 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 uh, contact the, the testing in the JMeter or in the Azure Node Test. As I mentioned, you can also get the data from the FinOp. So, um, for example, in in my demonstration, um, you can get the throughput of the PO creation. The uh, the result from my demonstration, we can see about the the throughput. So we can find um, actually um, the the throughput, the maximum throughput is twelve uh, per second. Can create the twelve uh, PO. So uh, we can you, you can get the higher number in, uh, uh, from from. Uh, from the, this scenario. So um, let's take a look at how to conduct the Azure Node testing uh, with your JMeter test pen. One of the, the most powerful when you turn the testing to the JMeter, I mean, maybe from Perf SDK or from another testing to the JMeter, you can embed your testing in everywhere. In this demo, uh, you will learn the concept and how to run the testing in the Azure Node testing. Uh, first of all, I have enhanced the, the user default uh, variable to support the parameter in the Azure Node testing already. Uh, you can go through my part two uh, in the blog post in the uh, Azure Node testing session or in our MSNAN regarding to the Azure Node test to enhance the parameter support in the Azure Node testing. So uh, firstly, uh, then uh, we go to the and not into the uh, Azure portal first. And then select the load testing module and select the um, Azure load test, uh, which I have created already. And in this case, I will create a test by uploading my create JMeter script in the PFH demo and click the create. <clears throat> So in the basis, I will provide a meaningful um, test name, create a PO and submit to the workflow. And then deselect uh, one the test after creation. In the test pane, um, upload the test script, JMS file. And then the potential test view file as well. Otherwise, um, you need to provide the sufficient file. Otherwise, your test won't work. In the part, I um, I need to provide the list of the variable uh, which uh, want to make it variable instead of the fixed value. Um, that is the host name, um, the schema name, and uh, the number of the concurrence user, and also the um, you need to provide the default value. Of course, you can change it each time after run the test. And in the low, I will leave it default as just for the testing. You can base on the requirement to change the um, the engine instance. Um, if everything default in the test credential in the monitor, you can load your um, the Azure monitor in the in the monitor. Then finally, click the create button to create a test. 
Okay. So when you complete, and then uh, you can kick your test, and then you can kick um, the run button to run the test. So um, you can provide the um, the test one description, like um, the dry one, and then we will run uh, with the uh, 15, 50 users and two loop. And also I will go to application and uh, then you know um, how many purchase order right now in the system. So right now it's empty. So we can uh, click the, uh, the one button to run the testing in the uh, Azure load testing. So it's provisioning and yeah, it will start soon. Okay, so it's uh, trying to executing now. When I refresh, uh, we can see a uh, number of the requests um, has been made in the live chart. So you can see the request, um, yeah, maximum is the 50. And in, in the application, we can refresh. So we should expect that some process order has been yeah, has been created already. Uh, it's about 18 true wall. So the testing is still executing. So we can see most of the process order has been created and submit to the workflow as well. And also they are created by the different uh, testing user. Okay, so finally we have the uh, 100 process order created which uh, should be meet our expectation and the testing has been marked done in the status. So um, in the node testing, um, except the, the live chart and also the, the Azure monitor if you have at it. And also we can still download the result file or the log file. So um, that means you can generate the HTML report uh, which night from the multiple user testing. Okay, so um, let's have the recap of the uh, important thing in this demonstration for the UI performance testing. Uh, with the JMeter. So firstly, the current shared performance testing approach with JMeter is only support for the tier two plus cow environment. So if you take this approach in the on-prem DFS file or that box, it won't work exactly. Uh, before initiating the recording process, processing, uh, uh, it's recommend to run a complete end-to-end -end signal before you take the recording first. This ensure that the all component and the interaction are, are fully uh, passed before the recording step. And the post post recording is very critical to verify um, that everything function is expected by repaying and the record pass. And for the scenario involve multiple user testing, so um, the extra testing user need to be created in the AAD, and then you need to add in the dynamic physics file and assign um, the, the, the particular uh, security role uh, for the testing. But please remember, you you, you, you don't um, use the user, the, the admin user for the uh, recording or for the performance testing. Uh, and at the end, it's strongly uh, advised not to conduct the performance testing. Don't try to do the performance testing in the production environment. Uh, it's not like the perf SDK. You are limited to conduct the testing in the production uh, environment uh, when you're using the perf SDK, but uh, it is different from the JMeter. So please um, do not to do that. Okay, so um, we have the FAQ. I will go through a uh, few of the questions uh, what I has been asked recently. So the first question is, uh, is possible to initial the recording directly from the FNO without um, going through the login process? Um, no, it's not like the path as the case. Um, the session should be captured uh, comprehensively from start to finish. And second question is, how about to um, handle the uh, MFA? So um, it's, ge it's generally recommend to temporarily disable the MFA for the performance testing because um, it actually is possible to achieve with the uh, MFA, but it's very complex. So um, we should focus on the application uh, performance testing. And the next question is the JMeter test script can be generated from the year one. Is possible? So yes, 
is possible, but our provided uh, dynamic physics by log in time bank is not support the tier one because the tier one um, is using the window open. And can I use the dummy testing user for the program testing? Um, no, uh, you need to have the Azure AD user uh, to be required for the multiple user testing. And uh, it support the on-prem environment. Um, it's same to question fee. It is possible to do the performance testing um, in the on-prem environment, but um, again, my approach only supports the sandbox right now. Okay, so um, here is the resources in this session, um, especially the blog post series to help you to enable the Jmeter testing with the file license and operation. And please share your question, and I appreciate if you can submit your feedback by scanning the QR code or the feedback link uh, we have to share in the in the panel. So a few of the questions that we had uh, is the question around, uh, is there any way to simulate API calls for SOP or creation? Yes, there is. And um, there is a tech talk mm -hmm. that made for warehouse device testing use JMeter, and we are calling APIs there. So yes, you can do that. Um, there's another question, which is around, can we collect CPU memory load from the infrastructure? Um, mm -hmm using like Jmeter test run, AWS and SQL DTU right now? Um, answer is right now, no. If when you run the test, you will capture the stats from LCS. However, uh, once we have a app insight GA, you can capture certain stuff and certain metrics using app insight um, that we can export in your your Azure portal or your Azure app inside. But right now, if you have to ca capture AWS utilization, SQL DT utilization, slow query and all, you can do it using LCS or you can do it using um, SQL sub access that you already have. Then uh, there's a question um, is apart from JMeter, do MS recommend is there any tools available to do the similar task? So there are several tools out there in the market. Again, I don't want to name just one because uh, you know some tools are licensed tool and we don't want to be recommending a free or open source tool over a licensed tool but there are several tools out there in the market right uh, to do a performance testing right uh, the reason I initially mentioned that we picked up JMeter is and it's just an open source and it has a wide community of support right it's open source uh, then uh, we have questions on have inside can we configure from monitoring, um, as of now, maybe no, it's very limited. We are exporting uh, very limited data. However, we are planning uh, to to release more telemetry data as uh, when we migrate from LCS to PPAC, um, the, the infra detail that you see on LCS is gonna be deprecated. So we are planning to push those data in, in the PPAC, uh, in, in App Insight. Okay. Um, again, Blaze Meter certificate expired in seven days. Can we extend it? I think Edison, maybe you can take this one. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. You can you can extend the certificate. You can modify the um the property in the JMeter, and then you can extend the certificate. I remember it should be few months or to one year. I can't remember that, but you can check the um the JMeter officially document. Uh, there are about the step to uh help you to to extend the, the certificate. And I found one of the, it seems very common question is talking about the MFA. So um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, I, I think it's very common question. And also I, I have been asked from different kind of the customer, they also ask, um, can they test the performance testing without disabled the MFA? But uh, yeah, please, please understand, you. First of all, you need to understand what MFA um, the organization has been enabled. Like if they just enable the uh, MFA is like the single sign-on. I think uh, that should be fine. I think the JMeter can handle it uh, easily. But if you said that you need to have the, I, I have heard the one case is um, the organization, they have enabled the, um, the device uh, log on. You, they need to pour the number in the device and then uh, sign in the application. Uh, that should be very complex, but I cannot say that uh, JMeter cannot handle that because if you have the API to get the number from the mobile 
or from any place, and then you can achieve the, the login. That should be fine. So that's why I um, generally recommend that uh, if we can disable the MFA, that should be great because we can focus on the application uh, performance testing. We are not doing the testing with the uh, like uh, the, the the security layer uh, before the finance and operation. So, uh, yeah, we really do based on which MFA um, the, the the customer enable. Yeah, and we have a couple of more questions before we wrap up. We are on top of the hour. So one question is that how are you going to provide a script for us? So the sample script, yes, we will post on our Fastac Asset Script Hub library. But again, these mm-hmm. sample scripts are going to use a standard process that we use in our testing. The process might differ for you, so you will have to re-record it. But yes, as a sample reference, we will post in our um, in our Fastac um, uh, repository. Second question is that can we use a um, final task recorder? Uh, and the answer is no. Uh, we mm-hmm. can't do it and record a task or AXTR file to generate the script. That we have been doing it in our uh, SDK, but that we can't do it uh, in JMeter. Uh, what's the hardware system requirement for a final to 100 test user load? Um, again, there is no definitive, it's a cloud solution. And what kind of hardware that you need for 100 users? Uh, what normally we recommend that whenever you plan to do a performance testing, upload your user's profile on LCS, right? So that you can get what kind of hardware that you need. So again, uh, most my recommendation is that not try to troubleshoot the hardware. Once you get a tier four or tier five and you run a performance test, if you hit an hardware bottleneck, work with Microsoft support or your fast track assigned architect uh, to get it resolved. What's next? Uh, so we have more questions, like a couple of more yeah. questions. Like, uh, we are on top of the hours. Like one question that I'm going to take here is that uh, HTML side of generate an HTML report can be done only after the test is complete. Uh, how do we monitor the result while the test is running? So yes, you can monitor the results. Um, if you are running in the UI fashion, in JMeter, you can look at the listeners. If you are running in the non-UI fashion, probably... Uh, you still generate a test file, right, Edison, uh, that you can monitor your test runs and failure. Um, mm. Like, if I think the question is more about if I run in UI, I can see the listener to look at uh, mm. my performance monitors yeah. and counters. But if I run it uh, in um, in a CLI fashion, then where do I go and see? Again, if you run it in Azure Load Testing Service, as your edition was showing, you can see your progress of your test cases. Uh, mm. But if you run the CLI files, and I think you can't write. Well, one, yeah, one of the option is uh, you, you, if you move the testing into Azure Load Testing, yeah, definitely you can monitor the the, uh, the testing progress. But if you want the testing in the long uh, GUI, um, for, uh, first of all, you can monitor the CMD. You can see uh, how many uh, how is the percent, percentage of the error you find that in the testing? And the second is uh, you need to enable the uh, real result tree in the test pen. When you enable that and the non GUI testing start, actually the result will also uh, uh, update to the uh, result tree. And after the testing, actually you can uh, open the dream meter and then open the uh, result tree as well, and then you can track uh, any issue in the testing. Yeah, I think we are over three minutes. Um, yeah. We'll still respond to the question that is still open um, in the forum, but in the interest of time, um, maybe we can wrap up. Yeah, we will continue to, to answer the question. And thank you, everyone. And uh, I will offer to uh, Adrenia to have to wrap today TED Talk. Thanks to our presenters and to you, our audience, for attending our Tech Talk today. We hope you have a great rest of the day ahead.